The Steam Deck has made some big advancements. The Fairphone is coming to the US and AMD keeps on giving us the good CPUs. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your Brett lunch this Thursday, July 6, 2023. Everything's a little weird because of the 5600X3D launch that happened this morning. So we had to shift hot news. Additionally, I'm traveling for my son's medical needs. So we're not anywhere close to home right now, trying to get stuff done with that. My wife's in the background also working. Hi. Okay. It's been a long day, which it's also been a long time since the Steam Deck launched. And now it just keeps getting better and better with Valve coming out with some new statistics that 75% of tested games are either now playable or verified on the Steam Deck. You can see that it's running at an accelerated pace where they are testing 3000 games every six months. So it's getting quicker and quicker that we're understanding what is working on SteamOS 3.0. Additionally, it shows you the ratio of verified versus playable games on the Steam Deck. but the big announcement is that there are now 10,000 plus games that are either verified or playable on the Steam Deck, making the handheld way better than it was at launch with more games supporting Linux gaming. And I don't know what the threshold is or when Valve is gonna start deciding to switch SteamOS to be portable to other handhelds like the ROG Ally or anything else, because that would honestly bring the entire handheld market to the next level. Seeing SteamOS be brought out to handhelds that are just better and more powerful. I would love to have that happen, but congratulations to the Steam Deck. And if you have one, or if you have an ally or any other handheld, you should definitely check out today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Syntec and their six-in-one docking station. This is the perfect accessory for any gaming handheld you might be using at the current moment. It's perfectly compatible with the Steam Deck, but also works well with any handheld with a top USB-C port like the ROG Ally or the iNeo 2S. It is a round base to keep things looking minimalistic while also not blocking vents that dissipate heat. It's durable, sturdy, and lightweight. Perfect for use on your desk with its anti-slip grips or for travel since it's so compact. Syntec was started in 2017 with a mission to revolutionize the digital accessories market by creating innovative and top-notch products to enhance the way users consume digital content. And they believe that your accessories should elevate your digital experience, offering more fulfilling experiences. And they want to do that through their motto, transform digital life. The dock supports HDMI my 2.0 out at 4K 60 Hertz, gigabit ethernet in, three USB-A 3.0 ports, and a USB-C 3.0 port for full speed charging. So whether you want to hook up a full desktop setup complete with a monitor to your gaming handheld, or charge your handheld while also getting full speed out of the ethernet port at the same time, the Syntex 6-in-1 docking station has you covered. You can check out the docking station at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Syntex for sponsoring today's video, and making all of my journeys with my handhelds way better. With yesterday's episode of Hot News, we talked about how Nvidia is gonna have a new power connector that they're gonna be rolling out to RTX 40 series and otherwise it's being found in some power supplies at this point, but it's also being found out that the RTX 4070 Founders Edition also supports this new 12v2x6 revision that the 4080 Founders Edition did not. This really doesn't change a whole lot, it's just the new spec is on the latest Founders Edition graphics card. But in case you're looking to get an RTX, X4080. I'm going to preempt UFD deals for a second. I actually don't even know if Reese is going to film deals, but the RTX 4080 has dropped to an all-time low price here in the United States of $999. If you check out this new egg listing, it's going for $1,100, but then there's a $100 off promo code in collaboration with their Fantastech deals, which is just, I'm sure, Newegg's version of Prime Day that they're trying to get to. It's currently on back order, limit 20 per customer in case you want to pick those up. They're estimating it should be here on Monday, but this represents a 16.6% .6 price decrease in the RTX 4080. Let me know, does this make it more appetizing to you? Were you really hoping that it was going to be at parity with the 7900 XTX, which is about where it is, especially since those GPUs are so close in performance, or do you think it needs to be closer to that 6 99, 799 price point that the previous generation 80 class cards were at. Let me know down below in the comments and you're gonna know before I do whether or not there's any UFD deals. Yo, welcome back to a special audio version of UFD deals. It's me. Audio Reese. Today we've got a couple of deals from Newegg, starting with the Corsair M65 RGB Elite Gaming Mouse in white, which you can currently pick up for only $27.99 with the included promo code for that 
fantastic pre-sale deals, making this $42 off. But next up, we have the Super Flower Ledex V Platinum Pro White power supply. This 850 watt 80 plus platinum unit is going for only $124.99 with the included promo code. But next up, we have some CPU deals thanks to the fantastic pre-sale deals, starting with the AMD Ryzen 5 7600X. You can currently pick one up for only $229 with the promo code, making it $70 off. But then on Team Blue side of things, you can get the Intel Core i7 12700K for only $244.99, making it $205 off. And then last but not least, we have the big boy, the Intel Core i9 12900K, currently going for only $344.99 with the included promo code, making it a whopping $305 off. But definitely be sure to check out Newegg for the fantastic pre-sale deals. Who knows, you might find something that's better suited to you. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thank you or thank you not, Reese, but I've got a deal for a lot of Americans because the Fairphone is finally coming to the US. This has been an EU only establishment for a little while. The Fairphone is essentially, you could think of it like a framework laptop, but in phone design where it's made to be serviceable, repairable, have long support from the company, and a lot of people have wanted that to come to the US. They're partnering up with Morena, who makes EOS or slash E slash OS, whatever we want to call it, which is a fully de-googled privacy by design fork of Android. So they're partnering with them to bring it over, and it's going to cost $599 if you want to check it out. Does this excite you? Do you want to check out the third phone? Let me know down below in the comments. And let me know if you're also checking out Threads, which is going to be Twitter rival made by Facebook, Meta, all of them. And now it's allegedly launched today, but one of the places it is not launching because the US gets the Fairphone, the EU does not get threads with Meta saying that they just haven't prepared it for all of the data privacy laws that are over in the EU. So that should make the UK and the US feel really comfortable that the EU has these laws that Meta can't abide by, but they're gonna service all of our data as much as they possibly can. Thank you, Meta, very cool. Cool. But Twitter's not sitting on their behind. They uh, they fixed the thing that was broken last week, which was you couldn't view tweets unless you logged in. That's now rectified. Elon did say that it was a temporary thing because data was getting pillaged and it was degrading the customer service. It's fixed now. Whether or not that has anything to do with threads launching, you can you know write conspiracy books about. And I don't like the conspiracy that AMD is withholding their best chips from us until they can siphon up all the high margin value that they get off of us for their more expensive CPUs. Because it's being found out that Ryzen 3 5100 is supposedly coming out sometime soon. This is being found in BioSupport, a chip that has not been brought up by AMD just yet, but it's going to be based off of the APU with the integrated graphics taken out of it. So the 5300G, but then just stripped down to be a four core, eight thread chip based on the Zen 3 architecture, hopefully being a little bit faster than the Ryzen 3 4100 that is currently on the market, which goes for a price point of roughly $65. If the 5100 could be beat the 4100 coming in at that price point. This is a place where AMD desperately needs to compete. Intel has kind of cornered the market with their 12100 and 13100. I would love to see a 5100 come in and do that. This is on top of the Ryzen 5 5500F that was supposed to be also getting launched sometime in this time frame. And then also obviously the 5600X3D reviews went out this morning. They're gonna go on sale tomorrow. You can check our review of it out at the link in the video description in case you're interested to find out whether or not this 5600X 3D is worth it. I hope the 5100 is more worth it than the 5600X 3D. But let me know what you think of the budget CPU. Let me know what you think of all of these orientations and how AMD has been approaching their CPU stuff. I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. Hopefully I should be back home by tomorrow for hot news. If not, you're gonna get another one on the road. But until then, goodbye.